I searched what is left of my mind for poems which I composed in the very early days of the Midrealm before I went off to conquer the East. Now, uh, last night I recited the Thongdrapa, the poem I wrote in praise of Sir Torvald the Grim, Baron of the Northwoods, uh, for the leather armbands which he made for me with the assistance of the Guild of Exotic Dancers. Um, tonight, I am going to move on to the other occasion on which I was blindfolded by the Guild of Exotic Dancers. Um, now, I'll say a little about the Guild first. In those days, we were blessed with two guilds of exotic dancers, one in Tregency, led by the beauteous Diane Aileen, first and third queen of the Midrealm, and uh, the other uh, in Northwards, led by Morna of Kenneth, the uh, fourth queen of the Midrealm. And um, this is the, the guild, as some of you probably know, which presented its charter to King Ariel, uh, which was written in a remarkable series of double meanings, which I regret I can no longer create, but uh, led someone present, especially viewing the dancers who presented it in their um, traditional garb, uh, to say hubba hubba, to which someone else responded, Huba, Huba, and the Huba Huba was born and has been with us to this day. <laughs> now, um, the um, story I'm going to tell actually began before that historic moment when Morna of Kenneth was only princess of the Midrealm, but she was already head of the Guild of Exotic Dancers. And we happened to be corresponding on other matters, and she mentioned that several of the members of the guild had been stricken with illness. And I replied that I was sorry to hear that the guild members had been afflicted for their sins. <laughs> now, the response of the guild was, that at the next feast at which they were about to perform, they came up and blindfolded me so that my eyes should not be defiled by the sight of their <laughs> sinful performance. My response to that was to file a formal appeal with His Majesty Carrier Dark of the Bowl, Part 2 of the Midrealm, complaining that the guilt had unjustly deprived me of the sight of their beauteous performance. Uh, at this point, Carrier Dark asked Mona uh, if she had a response. Her initial reaction was to send a letter to me saying she had always thought me a merry but unfathomable bard, unquote, but she hoped I wasn't really mad. And I assured her, no, this was all in good fun. And she said, very good, let us carry on. And uh, in fact, His Majesty Cariadoc uh, sentenced the guild in recompense to sew for me a set of body robes, the under tunic of which can be seen in the history hall. I regret that in the haste of packing for this event, I couldn't locate the upper robes, but they do exist. Um, and things went on, on with various exchanges until we came to the twelfth night of their reign, uh, which was in Tregurtsy, and which for reasons much too complicated for me to describe, His Majesty did not attend, but Morna did, and there was a contest for poems in praise of the Queen, uh, which I won with the poem I'm about to recite for you. I may say, at the event, that poem was not read by me. It was read by the court herald, who was a nice man, a fine herald, but not a poet. And uh, the effect was nothing like what I intended. 
what I had intended is what I'm going to try to recreate for you at this moment. Are we ready? For near a year I found reason to disagree with her whom I am bound to serve with loyalty. Shall I seek sovereignty? Yes! Since this plainly seen, this maid has mastered me. She is indeed my queen. When on times equal ground we meet in speaking free, never a maid I found so swift to answer me. Who may not answer be? Such is her comment keen. This maid has mastered me. She is indeed my queen. When to the pipe shop sound she grants that we shall see such proofs as do abound of beauty's round. Doomed to disparity, limbs of the maid's mummine, all is great charity. She is indeed my queen. This maid has mastered me, as is in all things seen. I am no longer free. She is indeed my queen. <laughs> now, I must say, the maid held that it was something like. For near a year, I found this man. You know, I mean, it was like that. Uh, so there we are. I might say after that, I presented Her Majesty with a large wax candle in the shape of a rose, intended as a courteous reference to the rose, which is of course the emblem of the Queen's. Only Countess Mistress of the Ro uh, Laurel and Mistress of Ro uh, Lady of the Rose, Abrajad Al Medina asked if I had deflowered the queen, to which my answer is emphatically no. Uh, um, but that's another story. All right. 